this talk uh, would be on asynchronous event notification for Redfish. Uh, before going to uh, why do we need an asynchronous event notification uh, for Redfish, what is there in current OpenVMC stack for asynchronous event notification? Currently, we have uh, two methods. Uh, we have SNMP event notification, as well as we have uh, REST uh, event notification through the WebSockets. But if you look into like SNMP, uh, we are using a custom MIP. Uh, and uh, if you look at a REST, uh, so there is, 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 that's not a standard. So that's why like uh, we thought of like uh, we should do the asynchronous event notification uh, via Redfish. So moving on to <laughs> next slide. Thank you. So what is the motivation behind uh, doing a, like asynchronous event notification via Redfish? First is Redfish is gaining attraction uh, for server management. We need to notify the client for, uh, for the various event logs or error logs, if it is there, how to notify. Uh, we need to notify the clients for, for the telemetry data, as well as if uh, there is a, some long-running operation, like async operations, which is there, and we uh, open a task, we create a task, so once the task is completed, how to notify it to the, to the client. So these are the, some motivational factors for uh, doing it uh, via Redfish. <coughs> so what are the various eventing mechanisms which is currently exist over HTTP? Uh, so one is like normal polling, uh, the SSC server side events, and the web sockets. So in, in, in a polling, if you look at right, so we do a, like a periodic polling where client is keep polling for a, for a resource, like what, what is the state of, the, uh, of a certain resource. But that is pretty resource in, intensive, uh, and the client doesn't get a, like a real-time updates. Uh, in a server side events, uh, client open a connection, and once the connection is open, uh, the server keeps sending a data uh, over, over the connection. If we talk about web sockets, in a web sockets, it's a it's a bidirectional protocol, and web sockets is uh, it, it uses its, its own protocol. Uh, only the handshake happens over HTTP, uh, and once the handshake happens, it's a uh, the web socket uses its own protocol. But uh, if you look at like a web sockets. Uh, it's a bi-directional, but in the case of Redfish, where we just want like the server should notify it, so we don't wa we don't want a bi-directional communication protocol. Uh, and with the web sockets, is <coughs> uh, the uh, normal like if, if there are legacy browsers, they don't support web sockets, but the uh, latest browsers they support the web sockets. So now coming back, or uh, like what are the different methods which Redfish supports? Uh, Redfish supports two type of eventing. The first one is the push style eventing. In a push style eventing, a uh, client makes a subscription request to the event service. An event service internally creates a subscription. And whenever, uh, if you look at like the event monitor, there is an internal event happen on a BMC. Uh, it opens a connection to the subscribed client and sends the data uh, to the client. So this is, uh, the push style eventing. So uh, if you look at like advantage, we don't need to do a polling. Uh, uh, but but the negative is it's a non-secure channel and and it's vulnerable to man in the middle attack. Uh, and, and connection cannot be kept alive uh, indefinitely. So means the TCP handshake uh, normally takes longer. So uh, we need to make a open a connection and then send the event data and then close the connection. So that will take a long. Uh, now, next eventing mechanism supported by uh, Redfish is server sent event. In a server sent event, the client makes a request to the event service to get the server sent URI. Once a client gets a server sent URI, client makes a request to uh, get server sent URI that opens a connection. Internally, event service creates a subscription request, and any event occurs. So whatsoever the channel was opened in a first step, uh, we will sending the data over the same channel. Uh, it's a secure channel, 
uh, and TCP connections needed only once and it's a single way communication. So this is uh, the server sent event. <coughs> so the Redfish event modeling, how does the Redfish event model looks like? Uh, uh, this, this PPT tells about there is a service route. Uh, in a service route, the Redfish service route, uh, which is nothing is your Redfish v1, doing a get request on a uh, Redfish v1 tells you there is an event service. Uh, if the event service is supported by the OpenBMC implementation. Uh, event service contains a subscription, uh, which is a collection object, and the collection can have a multiple subscription. Uh, the subscription is nothing is your Redfish endpoints, where uh, the, the event need to be sent. And the service uh, route will be having a message registries. Uh, again, it's a collection, and the message registries will be having uh, multiple registries. These registries would be used uh, uh, like the messages, uh, when we create an event message, the event message will be having a registries ID, and the message would be cons uh, cons uh, constructed with the use of registries. And we have the event uh, modeling, the event resource we have. So this is uh, the Redfish event service model map. Uh, so when we fire a request on an event service, these are the some certain important parameters in an event service. If we look into, uh, if it is a push style event, uh, we are bothered about server sent URI, which is highlighted in green. Uh, and then uh, if we talk about a push style eventing, we look for a, like a subscription object. So client makes a post request on a subscription to create a subscription request. Uh, the event service also tells about what are the uh, event format types supported by the event service. Uh, could be event and the metric report. The metric report is a telemetry report. Uh, resource types, a uh, resource type tells what are kind of uh, resources uh, this event service supports. And resource types is all the resources supported by uh, the Redfish. Uh, could be account service or could be network or anything else, chassis. So this is the event service uh, uh, that Delivery retry attempts uh, tells if uh, the BMC uh, tries to send a data to the uh, subscript, subscribed client and it gets failed, how many times the retry will be happen. And similarly for the interval seconds, uh, like what would be the retry interval before uh, attempting a second retry. Moving on to event subscription, uh, client can uh, subscribe uh, like uh, making a post request while it makes a post request what what are the what are the parameters which it has to give uh, the destination uh, where like the client has to send the event uh, back uh, context is uh, it's pretty like when you are sending the data the client can ask okay this is my context and we need to send the same uh, context as part of as part of the response uh, resource type uh, client can uh, the, in an event service, if you look at, it was telling like what are the supported resource types. In a subscription, client can say from the supported resource types, I am only interested on certain resource type. Uh, in an event format type, client can say I am only interested in an in a event. Uh, I am not interested in a metric uh, report. So this is event subscription. The event message, uh, event message contains uh, the event survey, and an event survey, if we see like, uh, uh, it tells about the event type, uh, the message, what is the message of the event, and the message ID. Uh, message ID, uh, if you look into it, uh, this is when we talk about registries. So it's a, it's a registry ID, uh, and, and there is a message arguments, uh, which is again, depends upon the registry, uh, the message registries. Uh, so this is our event message. So we saw in a previous slide, uh, the message ID was alert one zero land disconnect. So what does that mean? Uh, if you look into the message ID, so alert is a, uh, is a, is a registry, uh, alert tells it's a, it's a registry ID, uh, I will say registry type, 1.0 is a version, and the land disconnect is a, it's a, it's a message ID, uh, it's a registry ID. So uh, how the, how, like whenever the client gets this message identifier, it knows 
how to how to fetch the data or how to construct the messages. Uh, so this is the message registry. Okay, let's moving on. So <coughs> we did a quick POC. Uh, sorry, we did a quick POC on the on the same. Uh, what we did is like. Uh, Uh, we open a <coughs> we open a like a, a connection uh, before making a connection we need a session so if you look into it like we do, uh, we did a uh, uh, we open a like a connection uh, and then we give a like a uh, x authentication token and our uh, this this poc is for sse so we need a server sent uri the redfish v1 sse events is a is a server sent uri so client keeps waiting on this uh, on this URI, and if you look at into uh, uh, the other side of the window is is a BMC, where we fire a request. Where we what we did is like we created a, a user, like say like test user or something. We created it, and we go get a notification here. Okay, this user has been created. The resource added event we got it. So this was the <coughs> quick POC which we did it for the for the SOS, SSE. Uh, any question answer? Yeah, question. So if the client loses oh, the connection... The microphones here. So. I'll, I'll just show it. If the client loses the connection, uh, how do you get all the events that happen in the middle? Uh, so if the client loses a connection, in the case of SSE event, uh, so normally the client, because it's, uh, the connection has lost, the socket has been closed, the client will next time when the client comes up, it says last event ID, I got this. So now the server, whatsoever the event ID is there from the last event ID, the client will say, uh, the server will, the BMC will send all the, all the messages, all the events. So it's an implementation detail yep. on the server side that it has to persist, yep. a, a buff, it has to buffer a certain amount. Yeah, so it is like, suppose like the last event ID was say uh, two, and like on, on a BMC, there are, there are like suppose hundred of events has been generated after that, and because of there are some persistent issue, like there will be certain limit, and suppose the BMC is persisting now from 10 to 100, so it will send from 10 to 100. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, follow up on that question, so if it's asynchronous, is the ideas um, sequential? Uh, do you mean to say event IDs? Yes. Yes. So if I get it in, in uh, so I, there is no way I get an event in an in sequential. I, I mean, the sequential ID is always preserved when I get it from server. Uh, sorry, I didn't get you. Can you come again? So if it's an asynchronous event a mechanism, uh -huh. so it's possible that I would get the events in an in out of order, right? Uh, no, because the connection is over TCP. The connection is not UDP. Okay. We still do have a couple few more minutes. So feel free to ask more questions and queue up at the mics. Thanks, just a follow-up question to what I had before. Um, did you say that the client can actually filter some filter for certain events? Yeah. So you can say, I only want to know like, uh, like new user events, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, in that case, how do the event IDs work if you're getting only a subset of the full events that happen on the server? Mm -hmm. uh, so whenever, because like there's a subscription request, in a subscription request, client tells, I'm interested only in this event. And last time if client gets, uh, say like event ID number one, and we have, like on the BMC, there is a list of like 100 of events. So in 100 of the events, the BMC will look into it oh, this, this particular subscription or this particular destination is only looking for the account events. So from these like available events, the BMC will send only the interested events. I see. So the event ID is really f uh, specific to the subscription yes. theme and not all the events in general? Yes. Okay, thanks. So on follow-up on the same questions, so if I have asked for filtering the certain events, what will happen to the other uh, rest of the events, can I ask them next time or uh, will it be purged? So think of, there could be like a multiple uh, connected clients. Uh, one of the client is interested for, 
account events, the other guy is interested in a chassis events. So even like on the, on the VMC, there are all the events, depends upon what client is interested, we will be sending an event. So how does this client, the event ID works on multiple requests? So like, uh, so, so as I said, like it's a sequential number. So say like, okay, last time the, the, the client number one say, I got a, like a event ID number two. And like I got a disconnect and after disconnect whatsoever my interested events I'm looking for. So like after two whatsoever like say uh, various like various account events are there. So after two whatsoever is there like say five, ten or eleven whatsoever is there you, you keep sending. And if multiple clients are interested in the same event? You can still send it. So you can still filter in a yeah. different way. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Does the eventing scale with the number of subscriptions well? Because it seems like for every event, you have to check through all the subscriptions in order to see whether or not that they are relevant for the subscription. So it seems that if you have thousands of subscriptions, it would slow down the eventing quite a bit. Uh, thousand of subscriptions, like you're saying, like thousand of clients are listening for the events? Possibly because of cloud services. Uh, yeah, yeah, so in that case, yes. <laughs> if it is, yes. So because the thousand TCP connections would be there, yes, it would. Okay, I guess that's it then. Thank you very much. Thank you.